Hello science fans and welcome to Xi'an Sha. Do you ever wonder what's it like to be in the wonderful world of science, technology, engineering, and mathematics? Let's hear from experts, students, and aspiring STEM advocates about what it's like to be passionate about STEM. Join us in today's episode as we discuss the science behind the fisheries industry and talk to sheroes who've turned their passion into action. The Philippines is the center of the center of marine biodiversity. And so it isn't surprising that we actually are a major fishing nation, especially since we are also the second largest archipelagic state with our more than 7,100 islands. In 2012, the Philippines ranked among the major fish-producing countries in the world with a total production of 3.1 million tons of fish, crustaceans, mollusks, and other aquatic animals. Aquaculture contributed almost 791,000 tons to this total fish production, and most of it was consumed locally. The fisheries and aquaculture industry employed an estimated 1.5 million people in 2010 nationwide, with fisheries accounting for more than 1 million. In fact, the fishing industry contributes a whopping 196 billion pesos to our country's gross domestic product, with exports valued at $1.2 billion. Our top commodities for exports are tuna, prawns, and shrimp. The Philippine fishing industry comprises marine capture species, inland capture species, and aquaculture. Now, when we say marine capture, there's municipal and commercial. Municipal marine capture operates within 15 kilometers of municipal waters, whereas commercial marine capture operates beyond that, but both use fishing vessels that have a size of about 3 gross tonnage or larger. Municipal inland capture fisheries, on the other hand, operate in enclosed fresh waters in inland areas such as lakes, reservoirs, rivers, and brackish water fish ponds that are not intentionally cultured. And finally, aquaculture involves fishery operations that involves all types of culturing and raising different fish species, marine and freshwater organisms in fresh, brackish, or saltwater environments. Now, the Philippines reached the maximum economic yield from some of our fish stocks as early as the late 1960s, except in Palawan, Southern Sulu Sea, and the central part of the country's Pacific coast. Studies on our pelagic fish species also indicate overfishing, with decreasing catch per unit effort, meaning we are intensifying our efforts, but we are significantly reducing the number of fish that we catch. And due to the difficult times, fishers with little to no catch and believing they have no other choice, employ illegal and destructive fishing practices. Here in the Philippines, the common illegal practice used would be compressor fishing, spear fishing, or blast fishing. But in February 1998, the Philippine Fisheries Code was signed into law. The code consolidates all laws pertaining to the fisheries sector and repeals or modifies previous statutes that are inconsistent with it. The existence of the Philippine Fisheries Code is a statement that attaining food security should be the focus in all the research, activities, and management that involves fisheries in the Philippines. It also would like to emphasize that we have to achieve sustainability in our fisheries practices and that despite the complexity of the issues that we are presented with, we have to balance conservation with the needs of the people. Now, the Comprehensive National Fisheries Industry Development Plan recognizes that Despite a long history of attempts, Philippine fisheries have yet to be sustainably managed. And this unsustainable management results to increased poverty, more conflicts in resource use, and also decreased contribution of the fisheries sector to the national economy. But our fishers and farmers are among the poorest in our country, and answers to their plight could be at the bridging of research and management. So how is it really to be a woman in the field of fisheries and working with fishers here in the Philippines? 
So let's hear from our Shiro's about their motivations and experiences in doing fisheries research here in the Philippines and beyond. Hello science fans! My name is Hilary Orario and I'm a student, a researcher, and also a teacher. Hello science fans! I'm Wang Roman Egia, currently a scientist at the Southeast Asian Fisheries Development Center and a part-time associate professor at the bio department of the De La Salle University. And I'm into aquaculture genetics research. Hi, science fans. My name is Nerji Lekman, and I am a professor at the De La Salle University, using molecular markers like DNA and RNA to answer problems in fisheries and aquaculture. To dive into our discussion, let's first fish out what types of fisheries research our shiros have done. I started my career as a fishery in fisheries research as an assistant at the Phycology Laboratory of Seaflake UKB in Iloilo. But this field somehow didn't appeal much to my interest. And uh, only when I moved to the freshwater station of Seaflake in Rizal that I got exposed to freshwater fish and prawn breeding and genetics. And this later on became my fields of expertise. Now I'm sort of learning genomics, which is a more advanced uh, field as applied in farm aquatic organisms, not only tilapia, with the help of young collaborators at the LSU and Where there are things that you're really good at, in my case it was statistics, genetics, and biochemistry. But fisheries was not one of them. It was the opportunity that came to me when I started looking for a job. And I ended up at the UP Marine Science Institute working in giant camps. And that was both for aquaculture and fisheries. And therefore, fisheries was something that I learned from. I'm actually quite new in the field, but I'm a part of a research team that deploys an application called Crabifier. Uh, to crab farmers in different parts of the Philippines. Uh, besides deploying the app, we also hold uh, focus group discussions because we recognize that besides being target consumers for the technologies that we develop, um, these crab growers and other stakeholders are sources of local sustainable practices that can be used by the other groups, as well as from which we can refine the technologies that we develop. The field of fisheries is certainly complex and diverse, given all of the things that you have to manage in order to make it work. And our country certainly needs more woman power in this, given our more than 36,000 kilometers of coastline. So I wonder what could have motivated our sheroes to go into fisheries research. Proceeding from that opportunity, I did a position at the World Fish Center and was able to travel and work abroad. I also did a fisheries-related dissertation, this time looking into the possibility of assigning fish from a source, from a to the source population based on its genetic profile. So yeah, it was very exciting and because of that, I continued on moving in this direction. I actually did not have any specific uh, field of research that I targeted to get into when I first started, but I used to just tag along my current team uh, when they do field works before. And as I've mentioned, they really go to meet the farmers in the field to learn about their needs. And I really like that about them. They do research that meets people where they are. And so when an opportunity to be officially a part of the team landed in front of me somehow, then I took my chances. I got interested in fisheries research. Uh, for me, it was all by stroke of faith and luck. And I have set my eyes back then on pursuing a career in medicine. So in college, I took up zoology as my pre-med uh, pre course at the UP Diliman. And when I graduated, even if I got admitted to med schools that I applied to, my family wasn't really financially ready to fund my studies. So to make a long story short, my mother prodded me to instead apply for work. Hence, at the age of 19, I landed a job at SeafDeck as an assistant. And this has led me to becoming a physician rather than a physician. It's amazing how different the backgrounds are for Shiro's, and yet it led them to a similar path. And I'm so thankful that they are here to help our fisheries industry become more sustainable. But fisheries research can become as turbulent as an ocean in a storm. 
So I wonder, what could be the most difficult aspects of doing fisheries research that our Shiro's have experienced? I believe that if we're given more support, more opportunities, and less competitions for grants, we can be able to do more and bring more to the table that we actually do. Um, also, even more so in this pandemic, because of skeletal workforce and travel restrictions, then it's it takes us more time to have requests approved, to procure supplies, and all those things. For one, there's the slow procurement process. That is when we try to get supplies, equipment, delays. Um, these delay one's activities. Uh, the second is on the pressure of publishing, especially if the institution that you work for would be following a publish or perish policy. As a researcher as well, you have to have a certain set of skills, which include really the ability to secure project grants or funds. And of course, in one's career as a researcher, you will learn how to establish linkages, be more resourceful, and be more equipped with the technical competency in communicating your research results. All of these can actually help one overcome the challenges that we all face as scientists. What's most difficult about working in the Philippines is actually the inability of many disciplines to bend their research and their ideas and their minds to include others, except from those within their own field. Um, integration is something that is not natural for all of us. But if we are there to solve problems of the, on the ground, we need to be able to understand the field because the solutions will come from bringing together different skill sets, different trainings, and different understanding. And the main thing is we want the solution. But that's kind of hard. You, you, know, you find out it's really very hard. In the Doing anything of value is certainly never easy, but it is worth all the blood, sweat, and tears. So I wonder, what could be the most fulfilling aspects of doing fisheries research for our shiros? You must really like to do STEM if you're going to move on to be a researcher and scientist. It doesn't have to be, uh, uh, you know, it's not, it's not elitist and you have to be very, very good at it. But you must really, really like to do it. You must love it. I guess for any other profession that would be the same. We need people who have a passion to apply their talents and grow. This is a field wherein you actually get paid to study. When you grow up and you're actually paying your university so that you can study. But now when you're actually a, prof a professional in the STEM area, you get paid to continue to seek new things and learn new things. And that is one thing that will be part of your life forever. So if you, you must really love doing these things continually being curious, continually finding answers, continually finding ways to do things better. For me, it's when we go to field works and talk to farmers and deploy our technologies. And then when they try out Krabby Fire and then they see how it works and then their faces light up because they think that, they, that the app can help them also. Um, for me, that's the best part because I think that um, the hard work of organizing a field work as well as the tedious data analysis afterwards all pays off knowing that we are ultimately able to help them even if it's just a small amount of help. The most fulfilling aspect of being a researcher in the Philippines is one um, being able to solve research gaps be this basic or highly technical uh, the ability to generate information and develop science-based technologies that will be beneficial to end users. Um, being able to mentor future researchers, especially if one has a chance to be an educator as well. And um, the capacity to provide scientific advice to government agencies on issues that would require your expertise. As Filipinos, we need to be better custodians of our ocean. And in order to do this, we need to have more people in the field of STEM to watch out for it, to research about it, and to take care of it. So let's hear one more time from our Shiro's about their message to young Filipinas who are considering to be part of the wonderful world of STEM. So they say there are equal numbers of female and male scientists in the Philippines. 
However, I, I do think otherwise. I see a slightly skewed distribution with, with more women than men researchers since there are more women who pursue tertiary education in STEM. So if only for the fact that we have an educational system and a government agency like DOST that provides the necessary mechanisms like scholarships, research grants, uh, international connections, uh, to harness the capability of would-be scientists and engineers, I think this this alone should motivate more PNIs to go into the field of STEM. What I'd like to tell the next generation of STEM students um, to pursue a career in STEM would be very fulfilling because you are actually paid to study. You don't pay to study. You are paid to study and to want to continually be curious to learn new things, to learn new skills, to apply your knowledge to solutions, to find solutions for people on the ground. This is the field to be. So if that's what you want to do and this is what you want to pursue, then um, you're really interested and you think that even if work gets difficult, you'll find meaning to it. Let's go! For me, it's always meaningful, even when results are difficult or unexpected or non-significant. I think it's always contributing a pixel to a big picture. So it's meaningful hard work. And it can be also very fun, um, sometimes overwhelming, but also equally rewarding. So let's go! Thank you so much to our Shiros for sharing with us your time, your experiences, and for helping empower fellow women in the field of STEM. It truly is amazing to find out what it's like to be in the field of fisheries research. And to our audience, I hope you were able to learn something new from our episode today. And if you did, I hope you could give this video a thumbs up and also subscribe to our channel. If you have any comments, questions, or suggestions, Please don't hesitate to message me, your resident Filipina scientist, in the comments section below. Thank you very much, and see you around!